All right, Deep Sky Stacker for Mac. Yes, there is a Mac version out there. It's a bit of a hacked version. I think it runs on what they call a wine wrapper, but it actually runs very, very well. Um, I would actually say that it runs better than the PC one does. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is actually download the software. And now to get it for Mac, you can't go to the actual Deep Sky Stacker website. You have to go to uh, this website right here, which I will include a link in this website in the description below and I will try to keep this link updated if for whatever reason the link stops working just let me know in a comment and I will be updated again the latest version that you can download from this particular site is version 4.1.1 so from this German website here you'll be able to download it it'll show up in your downloads folder and you just drag the application right into your applications folder and it'll work from there so once you've downloaded the app and started it and I'm actually going to start it myself right here. It'll launch just like any other application on your desktop. So opening the picture files, let's start and we're actually gonna to navigate to a folder. And here's, this is probably like the most PC part of the wine wrapper that this app contains. Is I typically save all my files and stuff onto the desktop because from the desktop, I can most easily navigate them, but if you choose not to do that, let's say you want to keep your folders in like your pictures file, okay, you can actually navigate to the C drive and then go to users and then you're going to choose your username and then right there will be your picture folder. So like in here, like let's say if I got my Stellarium folders, in my Olympus workspace folder where I've got like some moon pictures. And this is showing only fits files right now. I can select raw files and you can see a whole bunch of raw files will show up here. Close that because we are actually going to work off of some folders that are on the desktop itself. And all right, let's actually stack some pictures here. So I'm going to go open picture files. And we're going to stack a section called the elephant trunk nebula. And we've got some good data here. I'm gonna select just the ones that are 300 seconds. You can see here I've got a few that are 600 seconds. There's one more down there, it's 300 seconds as well, but I'll show you how to get that in a second. You gotta to go to open picture file again, and then select that one and, and import that individually. And we're just going to right select all of these, check them all. We're going to open our dark file, and our dark file is probably the most important one as far as like reducing the noise. So we're going to go to Darks Thermal. This is a 300 gain file. So we're going to go to the 300 gain file. And then we're looking for the same gain, the same temperature. See down here, these are minus 20 degrees. And the same shutter speed, which is what this is. And it looks like, yes, I have already stacked these ones before, so I have a master dark. This will greatly speed up actual processing time. Let's go into flat files here. So we're going to calibration frames, flat files. I usually don't use flat files. And let's select all of these guys. That's going to take a second. I'm holding the shift key and selecting the first and last picture to select them all. I'm going to go into the dark flat files and the dark flat files were taken exactly the same way with the same gain, the same temperature and the same shutter speed, same camera and everything just taken with the lens cap on. Calibration frames, oops, wrong folder, wrong flats. I usually leave my dark files in a folder that's within my flats folder. Go back to the beginning, holding the shift key and selecting the first and last image, selects them all, opening them. And then last but not least, is our bias frames. Let's go calibration frames, bias. And again, we want the same gain level but shutter speed's the highest shutter speed, same bin level as well. These are 300 gain files, and I've already stacked this once before. There's our master offset, we'll select that. Otherwise, I would be, if I didn't have a master offset already set up, 
I would go into fits files only and just shift and select all of these but since I've already stacked them once before deep sky stacker creates a new master offset frame which we keep in there and we select that and that just really really speeds things up a lot last but not least we'll go down here and hit register it always gives you this encountered improper argument but it, it doesn't really mean anything ignore it and the advanced tab I'm going to go for like that's I typically go for like 80% you want around 200 stars and this is going to give me a little over 400 which is I guess, I guess that's okay Going up to your actions make sure that stack after registering is unchecked and then registered already stacked pictures automate detection hot pixels we'll hit ok and it will do its thing once the registration is finished we're going to get some results but there's not going to actually be an actual picture now this column right here this is a very important column it's going to give us a score for each of the images and you would want to go through and especially check those images that have received a lower score make sure that there isn't any star trails in them maybe your mount for whatever reason has some issues in that particular picture and those you would want to uncheck and there's also a neat little feature over here we can do a check all above a certain threshold so let's say we wanted to make 3000 our threshold we could do that but i'm not going to do that because actually over 2500 is actually pretty good for all these pictures and then since the images all look good now up here this is a this is like an auto stretch so you can kind of see your images and like I said, like the lower end ones, you'd want to check, make sure that there aren't any airplanes going through them. You can click through them one by one and just make sure that they're all good pictures that you actually want to stack. And that's, of course, suggested with this, this slider up here. Move to the right, turn to more black. Move to the left, it's going to brighten things up a little bit. And you can even clip it a little bit. And this is where we're actually going to stack images so we're going to stack all of our check pictures because I've looked at them all and they all look good and it's going to give us some information here all the flats it's going to tell us what darks are being used how long each are and there will be some red letters here if there's anything missing which I'm not missing any data here and so I'm just going to hit OK and then Deep Sky Stacker is going to stack the images and this will actually take a little bit less time since almost all the work has already been done when we register the images so once the stack is complete, it's going to load an image right here, which is going to be kind of show you what's going to go on. And don't expect this to be very bright. It may actually be almost completely pitch black. Uh, from here, we're going to export this by doing save picture to file. And we're going to go into the same folder that this what I like to do is go into where's the elephant trunk name, but here it is. And I like to kind of like name the file what it consists of. So it's 11 frames of 300 second exposures at 300 gain. And this is the hydrogen channel. So I'm going to put a capital H at the end of it. And that will save our hydrogen channel. Now we're going to go back and I'm going to show you one more time just the very beginning where we're actually going to stack the next channel. Now I'm going to go to back, I just kind of register or something like that and hit cancel really quick. And we're going to unselect all of the images except for the very best one. Okay. Actually, we're not going to unselect them, we're just going to remove them from the list. The very best image I'm going to keep. And I'm going to tell Deep Sky Stacker to use this as my reference frame. All right. And then I'm going to open picture files, just go to the next color channel. Okay, let's do sulfur instead, since I have some same ones. These are 300 second exposures. I'm going to select those. And then I'm going to tell. And these have already been registered once before. You can see they've actually already got ratings on them. So we're going to check these, and also this one down here, which looks like it didn't get a rating on it for whatever reason. So let's go ahead and we'll re-register just in case. We'll re-register these pictures 
and then we'll stack these images again and save them out once again this time putting an S at the end because this is the sulfur file. And that completes this video tutorial on Deep Sky Stacker for Mac. It's very easy software to use and really installing it on your Mac is quite easy. Hopefully you found this helpful. And so if you did, please like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. I'll be having more tutorials soon.